Welcome back to the Massive Loop SDK tutorial series. My name is Brandon, and I'll be guiding you through this third episode. Previously, we went over what layers are, how and when to use them. We also dove into several of Unity's built-in features that enable many content creators like you to create spectacular worlds. In this tutorial, we'll go over some of the components that the Massive Loop SDK provides inside of the Unity Editor. Additionally, at the end of this tutorial, we'll take a brief glimpse at the process of writing Lua scripts. Whenever you click on a game object within the Unity Editor, the Unity Inspector will show you more details about that object you have selected. Towards the bottom of this window, you will see a Add Component button. Clicking on this button will open a smaller submenu that will allow you to add many more properties and components to this object. Within this smaller submenu, we can navigate to the Massive Loop component directory. Here, you will find many of the Massive Loop SDK components that you are capable of using. Within the scope of this tutorial, we'll cover the most important ones ML Grab, ML Synchronizer, ML Clickable, Portals, the Audio Mixer, ML Mirror, and the ML Browser. Underneath the interactive subfolder, you will find both the ML Grab and ML Clickable components. Click on the ML Grab component to add it to your game object. It should look like this. A side note, if you want your object to have physics within your world, you can enable that by adding the rigid body component. Some of our Massive Loop SDK components will require particular other components in order to operate correctly. ML Grab in this case does not have any requirements. You will notice a gray hand appear over your object. This is an indicator that will help you determine how your object will be held in a VR hand. To change it, click on the arrow next to the default grab location. This will highlight it in your game object hierarchy window. You can now rotate and move this hand across your object, depending on how you want other players to hold it. You can also enable surface grab, which will allow players to grab it from any angle. With that, there is one last detail on the ML grab component that is important. Synchronization. Scroll down to the bottom of the ML Grab component. You will see in red lettering this object is not synchronized. Synchronizing this object will make it possible for other players to see you and other players interact with this object and change its in game position. Click on the Synchronize button. This will add several new components to your object. The two new components that are on your object are the ML Synchronizer and the Transform Sync module. These components will help synchronize the position, rotation, and scale of this object across all players within that world. Now, on to the ML Clickable component. This component enables you to tie particular events to the player's laser pointer and how it interacts with that game object. For example, you can make it so that the game object in question shows text whenever a player hovers over it. You can make it open a URL or you can bind other events such as on click, on pointer enter, and on pointer exit. This is useful for creating in game submenus. You can tie particle effects to play on either of these events and make those effects much more interactive. Now let's look at the portal component. This component allows you to string multiple worlds together with a portal in between each of them. When you're first trying to implement it, you may encounter this error. The ML portal component requires some type of collider to be attached to that same game object. Here it lists them for us. We can attach a simple box collider. Once we add our box collider component to our game object, please make sure that the size of it fits the game object in question. You can change the size of this box collider by playing around with the size component on it. Don't forget to also set the is trigger option to make sure that players can pass through the portal. This component allows you to string multiple worlds together with a portal in between each of them. The only thing that you need is that world's GUI ID, which can be found on the website. Next, you can choose which region you want this portal to connect you and other players to. We recommend that you use the best region option, as that will connect you to the most usable region for you latency-wise. The last thing that you can configure on a portal is the join action. This will define the behavior of the portal when moving players into a new space. 
The option Create New Room will do just that. With this option, it is important to note that it will create a new room for every player that walks through it. Each player will connect to their own room separately from each other. Next, you have the Try Join Existing Room option. This will make it so that each player that passes through it will attempt to join an existing room. Note that if the player is the first one to walk through a portal, they will create a new instance of which other players will join that particular player. Lastly, you have the Join Specific Room option. We recommend that you only utilize this option if you have created or want to maintain a persistent instance. Next up is the Mixer component. Once you've installed the Massive Loop SDK, you should see an audio mixer component towards the bottom of your menu. This allows for you to manually edit the audio levels for specific audio layers. Note, to have an audio source be affected by this, please make sure that you have set the output to a corresponding output mix. This will also enable players in-game to turn up or down the music on their own. ML Mirror Before we get into the mirror component, please make sure that you have gizmos enabled to make editing the mirror easier. You can find this at the top right of your Unity window. After you enable gizmos, you can add the ML mirror component to your object. We recommend utilizing either a cube or a plane. You could also use an empty game object. If you use either a cube or a plane, make sure that you disable both the mesh renderer and the colliders. You should now see a green box with white arrows pointing outwards. You want those arrows to be pointing towards the subject you want to be reflected. The mirror works in tandem with the massive loop layer system. Before you start enabling mirrors, we recommend that you set up the massive loop layers properly. ML Streaming Browser Similar to how we set up the ML mirror, please make sure that you have gizmos enabled. Having gizmos will make editing the ML browser component easier. You can add the ML streaming browser component to an empty game object. A blue box with a smaller red rectangular box should appear in place of that empty game object. You'll notice that there are two small blue boxes. You can click and drag these to resize the ML streaming browser. In the inspector window, you have two options. You can set the starting URL for that browser. It will stream from that web page as if it were a normal internet browser. You can then set the is requestable checkbox to on if you want to give players the ability to change the website to whatever they want. Or if you wish to lock the website to that page you initially set up in Unity, you can set it to off. Now we will briefly mention the Lua script component. Although we will not dive straight into Lua programming just yet, it is important to learn about the component itself before we go into implementation. You generally won't need to worry about the object ID, FB, or PH values. They are determined automatically once you attach a Lua script to that object. Selecting Run on Master Only will make it so that the master client is the only client that runs that Lua script. This is perfect for monster spawners or multiplayer objects. You will have to create your own Lua script to attach it to the Lua script field. And there you have it. Those are the components of the Massive Loop SDK that will help you make your worlds more interactable and immersive. Tune in next time as we dive further into Lua scripting. We'll be handling triggers, doors, guns, detecting collision and reacting to collisions. We will also explore audio clips and time in Lua scripting as well. We'll see you in the next tutorial.